There are tons of brushes for Photoshop on the internet. But can we load these brushes into Affinity Photo? Today I'll show you how to do that quickly, but also share a few extra tricks to get the most out of your brushes. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're talking about how to load Photoshop brushes into Affinity Photo. The process itself is pretty simple, but sometimes there are a few extra steps you need to take to get the brushes to look their best. Let's start with this simple brush set here. It's a Photoshop brush set that I found on Creative Fabrica. It has a cool halftone pattern, so let's download it and see how we can load it. So I'll download it into this brushes folder here. And once you download the file, you can just unzip it. And when you look inside, sometimes you see different files that explain how to use the brush. But in this case, all we really care about is the ABR brush here. So in Affinity Photo, we can easily load those brushes. Just go to Window, Brushes, if you don't see brushes already. And then in the three lines over here, just click Import Brushes. Navigate to the folder with your ABR file, select it, and then just click Open. Now it gives you a little message. It's useful to look at the name because that's going to be the category. So Halftone Brushes, I'll say OK. Now in my Brushes list, I can go down to Halftone Brushes. Let me create a canvas here. So I'll select my paintbrush, and I'll select one of these halftones. And I can start using my brush, and it seems to be working very well. Now sometimes you may want to configure the brushes a little bit, so you can just double click on the brush here. You can see a preview of what it looks like. If you go to the Texture tab, you can change the scale of the brush. Sometimes this is what you want to change the most. So I change the scale here. And in this case, you might want to have a smaller scale just so you can get more of the halftone effect with a stroke. But a lot of this will just depend on the type of brush, and you'll want to do some experimentation. If you decide you download some brushes and you don't want to use them anymore, I recommend cleaning up your brush set. With your category selected here, you can just go to the three lines here and say Delete Category. And I'll just remove these. OK, now let's look at an example that's a little more complicated. Sometimes you might download these brushes that have special effects, and they might require a few extra setup steps to get them looking correctly. So you can see I have this fire brush example here. And if I click through, you can see it has some really cool fire effects. So let's do what we did before, download it and see what happens. So I'll click Download. And I'll unzip it. Now we have our ABR file here. That's the brush we imported before. You can also just click and drag into Affinity Photo. And that's another way of importing it. It gives you the same message, so be sure to look at the name. Dynamic Fire Effects. I'll click OK. Now if I go to my brushes, I can see these dynamic fire effects here. So I'll click on it. And we can see we have all these different fire images. Let me select one. If I go and I make a flame here, it's a cool image, but obviously it's missing all that color information. So in a situation like this, I recommend looking at the files you unzipped and see if there's any special instructions. So let's do that. We have this dynamic fire set here, and there is a text file here. Let's open it. Now the text file is actually for Procreate, but we can actually do these steps in Affinity Photo. So let's follow through them and see what they're actually telling us to do. First, they want us to create a new layer called Effect. Okay, let's do that. The name doesn't really matter, but we'll follow the rules and call it what they say. Fill the layer with black. Let's do that. So I'll just select the Fill tool. Fill the layer with black. Set the effect of the layer to Screen Mode. So with my layer selected here, instead of Normal for the Blend Mode, I'll select Screen. And right now, nothing's really going to happen. Set the brush color to white. OK, I have white. Paint your effects on the layer. So let's do that. Still white, of course. Now he's saying after you finish with your painting, go to the adjustments and load the gradient map. Now in the files they gave us, they actually gave us a Photoshop file, which is called .psd. I'm actually going to open this in Affinity Photo. So this is the demo PSD file they gave us. And if I expand these folders, you can see they actually gave us a gradient map here. So if I double click on this, you can see indeed this looks like flames here. So instead of copying this gradient over to my other file, I'm just going to add it as a preset. So presets are something in Affinity Photo where you can actually save your adjustment layers. You can't do this in Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher for some reason. It's only available in Affinity Photo. So let's do this here. I'll click Add Preset. And I'll just call it Fire Gradient. And I'll click OK. So I'll go back to my other folder here. Now to load the presets, you need to go to this Adjustment tab here. If you don't see that, go to Window, Adjustment. And what I'll do is I'll select the Gradient Map tool here. And you can see I have my Fire Gradient, so I'll select that. And now we have our Fire Effect going. 
So what's happening over here is we're applying this gradient to the grayscale image. So if I turn off the gradient map, you can see it looks gray. If I turn the gradient map on, it's applying this color scheme to our flames. It doesn't look that useful yet because when you only have one layer and you use screen, our black isn't interacting with anything behind it. So let me paste an image here of just say a house. I'll make it big here so it covers the whole image. And then I'll put our house at the bottom here. And then you can see what's happening is our flame effect is actually looking like a flame. When we have the screen mode, black will have no effect on the image below it. So when I turn this image on, the black disappears. So now with this layer, if I wanted to get rid of the flame, you would actually have to paint black over it. So I could do this here to erase it. Paint black. So that's what my layer looks like. And then to actually see what I'm doing, I can select the flame again. Make sure you have white selected. And then you can start painting as you like. So that was an example of how to load some Photoshop brushes into Affinity Photo. Sometimes it's as simple as just loading in the ABR file, but other times there's a couple extra steps you need to take. Usually the good brush developers will have clear instructions for what you need to do. If you have any questions about this process, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.